All right, so lots to break down here. I'm definitely get used to uh, being uncomfortable with problems like these. So let's let's break this down for a second here. So we have a piecewise function. You can see that the cutoff for this is the boundary is, is at three. Okay, one's less than, one's greater than. So right away, when you see this first one right here, Roman numeral one, it says the limit as h approaches zero from the left. So just think like negative 0.1, negative 0 0.001, that sort of thing. So for that piece, try to color code this, we want the one that's less than it. So if you did three plus negative 0.1 or negative 0.001, it's gonna be less than three. So you were going to want to use this piece here for that first one. So I'm gonna color code this, it's red. Okay. This next one, it's, it's H is on the right side. So it's a little bit bigger than zero. So like 0 0.1, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, that sort of thing. So you're going to want it to be greater than or equal to three. If you notice right here, it's three plus that little nudge, that 0 0.1 there. Roman numeral one and Roman numeral two both mean the derivative of F when you plug in three, only it's one-sided derivatives from each of these. So what you can do is look at these, both of these pieces and basically do the derivative. So I'm going to go back to color coding here with the red. The derivative of, so I'm going to write the derivative of 2X minus two. Okay. If you watch the video, you should know that this right here means the derivative. It's the derivative operator, the derivator. Okay. And it just means take the derivative of whatever's here. Now using power rule, you can bring the power down. So it's two times one. It's going to be two times one times X to the first minus one. So you have to, you bring down the power and then you minus one from the power. Okay. You do the same thing here, but the two, it's just two by itself. But if you wrote it as a power, it'd be two X to the zero power. Okay, so you bring down the zero. Well, it's just zero times a bunch of stuff. So I'm just going to write minus zero. Okay, the derivative of a constant is always zero. And if you think about that, if it's minus two, that's just a horizontal line. Okay, well, there is no slope of a horizontal line. So if you pick one point on that line, the slope, the tangent line is going to have no slope. Okay, there is no change. And the derivative is the instantaneous rate of change, the change at a point. There is no change because it's always negative two. So the change for this is zero. That's why I put a zero in there. If you wanted, you could still use power rule on it. You bring the, the zero down. So it's zero times two times X times zero minus one. Zero times anything is zero. So it's just going to be a zero there. Okay, well, X to the zero power is one. So I'm going to cancel this out here. The one is canceled out. That's garbage. So then let, the thing you have here is a two. So this first piece, the top piece right here, the derivative is going to be two. If you do the same thing on the, the next piece, the orange piece here, it's also going to be two. Okay. Because the derivative of two X is, we already showed that it was two. The derivative of negative four is zero. So that's going to be two. So Roman, Roman numeral one and two are both true. Okay. It's saying the derivative on one side is two. The derivative on the other side is two. These are both of the sides. They're both two. Now this is where it gets a little trickier. So it says f prime of three is equal to two. That means that the derivative is equal on both sides and it's continuous, okay? And that's where people get, get it confused. They just think, oh, the limit has to agree on both sides. The derivative has to agree on both sides. The derivative can agree on both sides, but it does not mean that it's differentiable at that point and because it has to be continuous. So to kind of show you this, I'm gonna graph this one out. It is equal to 2x minus two, and we're gonna go x is, what is it, less than three. Okay, f2 of x is equal to 2x minus four, and that's when x is greater than or equal to four. Oops, three, that's embarrassing. And if you notice, it is not continuous there. Okay, you can also use the limit definition of continuity to show that it's not continuous, but there is clearly a jump. Okay. Well, derivatives have to agree on both sides, but it also has to be continuous there because if you actually put it into that f of x plus h equation, you would end up with a different answer. I'm not going to go through all that work because that's a nightmare, but you can just see it's not continuous. So because it's not continuous, it's not differentiable at that point, even though the derivative agrees on both sides. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, again, I, I said, if I, if I put this into the derivative formula, so if I wrote like um, the limit as h approaches zero of f of three plus h minus f of three all over h. This is equal to f prime of three. Okay. F prime of three is just a way easier way of writing. Math's a language. You have to be able to translate it to English. So this is all math. Understand what it means. Okay. Both of those mean the derivative at three. Okay. But the derivative of three does not exist because it's not continuous. If you actually worked out all that math, you would see that for yourself, that it will not work. Okay. I'm not going to go through it because I already know it's not continuous. It's not going to work. 
Um, and the reason, the main reason why is this thing right here. Well, actually, it's the whole numerator that would really throw it off because, oops, because if you actually threw in H going on both sides, it's uh, it's not going to agree on both of those. Wait, yeah, it's not going to agree on both of those because one of them, there's a jump, long story short. Um, either way, long story short, it's not this one because it's not continuous. So the answer for this one would be C. This was covered in 213. So if you watch the video on differentiability, that's what this is all about. The derivative has to agree on both sides and it also has to be continuous at that point.